All right, in this lesson, we're going to install the Capital IQ plugin. Go to My Capital IQ, and on the left navigation, go to Downloads, then download the Office plugin. Follow the prompts, and we'll meet you in a new Excel workbook. All right, so here we are in Excel. We have followed the prompts to install the SMP Capital IQ plugin and we can access it here on the ribbon now. The first thing I want to show you is the pre-installed templates. These are very powerful tools for getting started. Let's go to financials and then let's go to standard. So once this is loaded, we can see that we've got a set of financial statements for IBM. And we can see that everything here in green is a capital IQ formula with this at CIQ syntax. And we can see that we've got all sorts of items here with different time periods. And capital IQ is pulling these numbers in. Now, if you really want to see the power of this tool, we can go up here to the ticker which is what's controlling this entire template. And we can change it from, say, IBM to GE. And then it loads GE's financials. So you can see that this is a pretty powerful tool for creating profiles or creating presentations or dashboards for companies and quickly changing them. You could change the currency. You could change the date. Across here, you could change the fiscal periods. You've got LTM here, that's super handy. Now, let's try to recreate some of the stuff that's built here manually. You may not always want to use a template like this. You may sometimes want to calculate things yourself. So let's look here. This is 2019 year-end total revenues for GE. Let's rebuild that number off on the side here. Let's go to Formula Builder. We are going to have the identifier of the company, which is the ticker, linked to this cell here. What we're going to look for is revenue, total revenue. That's the metric that we want. We're going to pick an absolute period, in this case, fiscal year 2019. As of date, we will link to the cell here that controls the as of date. And for the currency, Let's also link here to US dollars. We will then click Add Formula, press OK. So what you see here is this number pops in. Let's just format it. And you can see that we get the same number here as we got with the preloaded template. So that's how we're able to manually build a financial line item. And we could go down and do that for any of these items and for any time period. That's how you can pull in data into Excel using the CapIQ plugin. All right, let's look at another example of a template. Let's go to valuation and then let's pick WAC, weighted average cost of capital. Here we've got a very nice template where we can see all of the assumptions. We can see a beta calculation section over here, WAC sensitivity analysis, and ultimately down here, the overall WAC for IBM. And you can play with the assumptions. There's all sorts of things in here that you can change. And you can do a very detailed weighted average cost of capital analysis using this template. Now let's load another template. Let's go into valuation again. And let's pick DCF. Let's look at the discounted cash flow. Here we go. Here's the DCF analysis. You can see, once again, there are assumptions laid out for IBM. You've got a beta calculation built into this. So here's the WAC that we saw previously. But beneath it, we've got the projected cash flows. We've got some historical numbers for reference then those forecasted out into the future. We can see some growth rates here. That's nice and helpful. DCF assumptions. And then finally, you get to the present value. 
Then there's sensitivity analysis beneath that as well, where the terminal value is sensitized based on different inputs. Working capital assumptions. So you can see that there is a lot here in this template. You've got a lot to work with. And you can simply switch from IBM to any other company just by changing the ticker. Let's just change that to GE for General Electric. So then we could take a look at GE's numbers here. Let's go back to IBM. And let's scroll down. Really, at the end of the day, this is what we're looking at. We're getting an implied share price based on the DCF analysis. We've then got the company's current share price as observed in the market. And we can see if it's trading at a premium or a discount to that implied share price or that intrinsic value which may indicate a buy or sell opportunity, depending on how you look at it. Of course, you'd have to carefully analyze the assumptions that generate the forecast to see if you agree with this assessment here. So here, this model is saying that the current share price is significantly higher than the implied share price should be based on the model. But the devil is in the details. You'd have to look at all of these assumptions and see if you agree with them. Of course, you could change them and ultimately come to your own view on intrinsic value relative to the public market price. So this is a great tool if you want to quickly get started on a discounted cash flow analysis. All right, let's look at one more template together. Let's go to company tear sheets. And how about this one pager? All right, so here we have a really nice one pager that summarizes IBM. We can see the valuation of the business, share price chart, capital structure, a financial summary here, and then some charts as well that highlight the financial summary and the valuation. Dividend history, key management members, ownership, there's a lot of good stuff here. So you can imagine that this type of one pager template, which by the way can be very easily updated by simply changing the ticker would be extremely useful to you as a financial analyst. Just like that, now we've got the whole analysis done for GE. So this is a great tool for creating one-page profiles on companies. You could take these and insert them into presentations, turn them into PDFs on their own, combine a whole series of them into one big PDF booklet. There are a lot of ways to use this tool and this template to save yourself a lot of time as a financial analyst. All right, let's look at a simple example of how we can use the formula builder to create our own template from scratch. We're gonna start by using the identifier, which is the company's ticker symbol. We then want to get revenue. So let's go into the income statement here, select total revenue. We can select the 2019 fiscal year, as of date, and currency, which will be the global default. Let's add the formula here and press OK. We can take this and fill it right with Control R. And now we have the total revenue in 2019 for IBM and for GE. And you can see in the formula here, what is being referenced. So if you want to disaggregate this into a more dynamic formula, you can strip parts of it out. Let's take a look at how to do that. So let's study the syntax here. You can see that it starts by taking the company's ticker symbol, which we've linked up here dynamically, so that's good. But then what we want to do is strip out revenue. Let's copy that. And we can actually replace the label here with IQ total revenue. And then we can delete this and make a reference here, which we can anchor in place using F4 a couple of times. And then fill that across to the right. So now this is looking a bit more dynamic, like our typical Excel formulas we like to build. Let's also strip out the fiscal period, we could put that in the top left corner as an assumption. 
So we can now delete that from the formula and we can link it here. Let's press F4 once to anchor that in place, fill it right with control R. Okay. And now all we have left is the current date as of date, which we can copy and paste here. Let's change that reference in here. Also anchored with F4 and fill right. Let's just quickly format this. There we go. Now we've got a nice dynamic formula. So now if we want to fill it in for EBIT and net income, all we have to do is go into the formula builder and we just need to figure out the CIQ code for EBIT. And we can see that it's IQ underscore EBIT to cancel. Let's do the same for net income. IQ underscore NI. So we're going to fill these formulas down. First, let's just make sure everything is in place to fill down. We want to make sure that the reference to the ticker, which is cell B2, is properly anchored, so it will always refer to row two. So fill that right with control R. If we've done our anchoring properly, we can fill all that down with control D, and there we go. We get the numbers that we wanted. Let's press F5, go to special. Let's select all constants. We want to format those to be blue to indicate that they are hard-coded assumptions that drive our model. So now we've got in black these dynamic formulas. We can change these if, for example, we want 2018 instead of 2019. We get those numbers just like that. If instead of General Electric we want Goldman Sachs, we simply change it to GS. We get Goldman Sachs numbers there. We would have to do a deeper dive as to why there is an NA for EBIT in 2018 for GS. Well, let's just change this back now to GE. And we may also want to add a company name here. Let's just do this one last item. Let's go to Cap IQ Formula Builder. Search for company name. There we have it. Let's reference to the cell here. Press OK. There we go. It's filled to the right. And I like to have company name here. Let's change it to a formula because if you're simply referencing a ticker and you don't know all the tickers by heart, it could be easy to have a typo in the ticker and you'd never know down here based on the revenue alone. But if it's linking to the company name, of course you would know right away if you have the wrong ticker. So that's how you can start to build a custom template for yourself as a financial analyst using the SMP Capital IQ plugin. Thank you so much for joining us for this course. We've covered Capital IQ use cases in investment banking, equity research, investment management, credit, private equity, venture capital, and for corporations. We've looked at a lot of functions across the Capital IQ platform, and we've really focused on screening as one of the most interesting and powerful use cases for Capital IQ. In later FMVA courses, such as business valuation modeling, we'll be using Capital IQ to extract financial information and use that in building financial models in Excel. Now that you've taken this fundamentals course, you should be able to easily look for data that you need on a company or the financial market on the Capital IQ platform. We hope you've seen the power of the Capital IQ platform. We encourage you to get two months of free trial access to Capital IQ through CFI's full immersion program. 
If you're not already registered in the Full Immersion program, you can go to your student dashboard where you can enroll or upgrade from basic to full immersion. Once again, thank you so much for joining us for this Capital IQ Fundamentals course.